cruise news. One cruise line has some lofty plans that will change things up for cruisers. Several big projects are in the works. I'm going to get you the details. Plus, we have ship issues, some tragedy, and more. I'm going to get you the top cruise news updates from across the cruise industry, and I'm going to get you the information fast. Coming up. Welcome to Travel Scouts. My name is Jason and we are your cruise information channel. We get you the cruise news and information you're looking for quickly without wasting your time. So if you love cruising, consider subscribing. Okay, I am coming to you from our stateroom here on board the Regent 7 C Splendor cruise ship. Let's go ahead and jump into it with number one. The Carnival Freedom cruise ship is on its way to be repaired at the Freeport shipyard in the Bahamas. The left side of the cruise ship's exhaust stack caught fire on Saturday. Some reported that it was due to a lightning strike, but that could not be confirmed. Thankfully, no one was injured. However, the next two sailings for the cruise ship had to be canceled. The Carnival Freedom's funnel also caught fire back in 2022, so there is some history with this ship. If they are successful with the repairs, the next cruise is scheduled for April 4th. Number 2. Margaritaville at Sea's Islander cruise ship will be offering longer itineraries. Margaritaville at Sea's Islander cruise ship is set to launch with the cruise line in June of this year. Margaritaville at Sea has been known for its very short two-day sailing since it began. The Islander will be changing that. The cruise ship will home port in Tampa, Florida. And it will be offering four, five, six, and seven night sailings to Key West, Mexico, Jamaica, Belize, and Grand Cayman. Moving on to number three, the Carnival Forense has completed its transformation and it is en route to Los Angeles, California. The cruise ship was previously part of Costa Cruises. However, it just completed a full retrofit to make it a Carnival cruise ship. It is currently repositioning from Europe to California with only crew on board. The ship's maiden voyage as a Carnival cruise ship is scheduled to depart from Los Angeles on April 25th. Next, number four, Royal Caribbean's Brilliance of the Seas cruise ship has experienced some technical issues. The ship is supposed to be on an 11 day sailing out of Sydney, Australia. However, that cruise had to be cut short after only three days due to problems with its propulsion systems. Additionally, the next cruise that was scheduled to depart on March 30th also had to be canceled. The cruise line believes the ship will be repaired and ready to go for its April 4th sailing. Then number five, two Holland America crew members lost their lives due to a steam leak incident on board the ship. This occurred on board the Nua Amsterdam cruise ship. The ship was at Half Moon K in the Bahamas at the time. The two crew members were reportedly installing filters in a mechanical area. However, some sort of explosion occurred that released steam and led to their death. The situation is still under investigation. Let's definitely pray for their families. And number six, Royal Caribbean is greatly expanding their footprint at cruise ports around the Caribbean. The cruise line already operates popular private destinations such as Coco Cay and Labadee. And in 2025, they are scheduled to open up their own private beach club in Nassau, Bahamas. So that will provide a new experience for those that cruise with them out of their East Florida ports. Many people do not get off the ships when they are at Nassau, Bahamas, so this will be something new for those on Royal Caribbean ships to do. It will also be more profitable for the company. And now they have released information regarding their new private beach club in Cozumel, Mexico that is scheduled to open in 2026. This new beach club will be offering various pools, dining, kayaks, cabanas, shopping, and more. More details will be released in the coming months. Most cruises out of Gulf of Mexico ports do visit Cozumel. And this expansion continues to be ongoing. As I shared this with you today, we just docked in St. John's here in Antigua. And recently, the authorities in Antigua said that Royal Caribbean is in talks with them about a private destination here as well. Now, there were talks of that back before the pandemic, but it was put on hold. Not sure if this will come about, but Royal Caribbean is looking for that expansiveness. It gives them more profitability as a company, and it also gives new options and new destinations for you and I to visit. Thinking about Cruise Line's private destinations, you got me to think, and so I have a question for you today. Chime in down below. When you go on a cruise, do you prefer to go to A, a Cruise Line's private destinations, or do you prefer to go to B, regular ports of call? The private destinations are great in that they are safe and they are normally clean. The regular ports of call are great because you get to experience new culture. So what do you prefer? Chime in down below, along with any thoughts that you have about that, and I will look forward to reading your comments.
One quick note, let us know down in the comments if you have any questions about cruising with Regent Seven Seas. Kelly and I will try to get those answered for you while we are on the cruise this week. Thank you for watching today, and we will catch you in the next video.